Hi, um, my name is Guha. I'm just gonna, I'm the guy who started this custom search engine project at Google. Um, I'm gonna go through some introductory, set some context as to why Google's created this product, and then gonna hand it off to Patrick Riley, who's a tech lead, who's gonna go through um, sort of a fairly important uh, new feature we added sometime this morning, um, which makes custom search engines way more powerful. So to set some context, okay, yeah. So when you look back at, I mean, some of us were around and, and sort of using the, web, using the internet before there was a web. In 1994, it was not at all obvious that the web was going to win. Um, on the one hand, you had the web, which was basically in the universities, and on the other hand, you had MSN and AOL and Prodigy and all these guys gearing up for a fairly big fight, and they were investing billions in determining who was going to own the biggest network. Uh, and needless to say, academia and grad students didn't have anywhere near that much money to put into this game. And yet the web won. Why? And the reason was because on, for the, to publish on the web, and this is a phrase which I use called open publishing. To publish on the web, you did not have to go and do a business deal with anybody. If you wanted to get your content up on MSN or AOL, you needed to go talk to those guys, which meant that if you're a small person, they weren't interested in talking to you. And over a period of time, uh, actually not that long, just a, a couple of years, it became obvious that the ability to go and put up, if you care deeply about a topic, to be able to put up content about that topic meant a lot. Custom search engine, the goal, I, the goal was to extend that philosophy to not just putting up content, but if you know a lot about a topic, maybe kite flying or legal stuff or whatever, um, you should be able to improve search for that topic. It's not just Google and Yahoo and Microsoft who can be in the search game. You should be able to uh, create a better search engine for their topic, and doing so shouldn't require going and writing a, an indexing machine and a crawling engine and getting raising VC money and all that stuff. In fact, it should require not much more effort than it required for you to put up your original site in the first place. And not only that, um, you should have all the other incentives. You should be able to make money out of it, gain fame out of it, and so on and so forth. So this was a goal, and to do so, what we had to do was essentially create what we call a programmable search. You should be able to specify how the search engine should behave. You should be able to specify what portion of the web it should cover. You should be able to tweak the ranking function. You should be able to change the UI, and so on and so forth. We launched this <coughs> last um, October, November, and, you know, We've been, I mean, it's, it's been heartening. We've been, it's been really nice to see all the, uh, we expected, you know, X custom search engines to be built and we got about 10X. Uh, and not just lots of small uh, itsy bitsy sort of experiment test one, test two ones, but here are some of the interesting ones. So Cornell Law School has gone and created a legal custom search engine that removes, that just has the academically oriented legal stuff. It doesn't have all the, uh, and websites of lawyers who are trying to uh, get you to use them. The American Librarian Association has gone and created a whole bunch of these things, including one for kids. There are a bunch of others. So for example, Real Climate is being created by, um, it's a search engine which searches over scientifically credible uh, information sources about the weather and the climate and global warming and so on. Before custom search engines, to create such a search, such a search engine would have required a big grant from the government and things like that. Now these guys were able to do it in about 20 minutes. Um, there's a whole bunch of them about programming languages, uh, a whole bunch on politics, and uh, my f sort of favorite example of a search engine which nobody would have thought of going and creating, and, um, but this made quite easy is the last one there. This is a, somebody has gone and created this, and I don't even know who, I just stumbled across it the other day. And this, you, you, can, you can type in normal clothing terms and it'll return you only items, not just from particular shops, from, but from across the web, which um, satisfy certain criteria, which are hard to even express using long string of keywords, which are you know, the kind of clothing that Islamic, uh, 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 Islamic women tend to wear, or a search engine like that would have never been created that way. So we created all this, it's been going great, why change a good thing? Well, it turns out that there was a whole bunch of kinds of applications which were too hard to build uh, using our current model. Um, 
And the solution there was to be, again, more web-like. So I'm going to hand it off to Patrick, who's going to talk about the new things that we pushed out this morning and the new kinds of things that can be done with it. OK, thank you, Juha. So um, for those of you who don't know a whole lot about custom search engine, let me give you the sort of two-minute intro, OK? So as Goa said, with custom searching, you sort of start with Google. So you start off with you know, good results to start, off, you know, to, to start from, and then you get to customize. You put this stuff on your website. You get to change the look and feel so that it matches, matches your website. You can build these things collaboratively. And it's also nice that you can make money from the traffic, OK? So that's, like the, that's the big picture. Um, and so here's one example of what this actually looks like. So this is a site called Jump Up, made by Intuit, and it's all about um, resources for helping small businesses. Okay, and the only web and the web results that you get from this are web results that they consider good resources for create um, for helping uh, up and coming small businesses. And you see, they put this on their website. They have their own content on here as well, and it's all integrated into what, how their website looks. Another example here is a, a site called Volnpedia, and this is about security vulnerabilities and I just changed the volume, excuse me. And one thing that's interesting here, they've actually also integrated with the Ajax search API. So they can uh, add all these tabs showing, uh, showing different, slightly different uh, uh, parts of the web and part, slightly different parts of the resources that they're interested in. And they've done this, you know, as I said, with custom search and, and with the Ajax search API. So how have people been actually been creating this thing? So um, people who come to, come to Google and come to this, this wizard, uh, where you in input some basic information about your search engine, title, description, some relevant keywords so that we can help tune ranking. And then the really important part are these URL or URL patterns that you want to filter or promote. Okay? So this, is, this was the first page. And then you're done. Okay? That's basically, you now have a search engine that works and you can you know, check out the results. And from there, you can put it on your website, customize it further, and keep working on it and make it better. But it's been really easy to actually make one of these search engines. Okay? <laughs> So this sounds great, right? So why or what do we need to do, right? So there's a, there's a few communities that we think aren't well served with this current model of making custom search engines. So here's, here's what I mean. Let's say you have some data, okay? You have some data sitting around, you know, maybe, you know, maybe it's from your blog, maybe it's, a, maybe it's in a web page, maybe it's just sitting in the database on your server, right? And you want to automatically make a custom search engine out of that. Before, you'd have to go to us, copy, you know, copy and paste all the URLs in, and it got to be a little bit tedious. Another type of thing you may want to do is if you want to generate lots of custom search engines, right? Maybe you have lots of you know, slightly different takes on the web, right? You have lots of different subsets that you, of the web that you think are very interesting, and you want to make many, many thousands of custom search engines. This can be hard to do if you have to go to our, you know, go to our wizard and keep entering URLs every time. So that's another community that's not served very well. Similarly, if you have you already have users at your website and you want to make a custom search engine for every one of them, right? And blogs are a great example, right? Wouldn't it be great if every blog had a custom search engine of all the things that were relevant for that blogger, right? So if you're in that kind of situation where you want to make lots of free to users, how would you do it? Here's the interesting thing. All of these things have the same solution. And as Goa said, this is be more web-like. Don't Push the data to Google. Don't let us store it. You store, this, you store the custom search engine definition, and we'll fetch it from, we, from you when we need that. So let me, let me give you, you know, tell you how that really works. And if there's one slide you remember from this entire talk, this is going to be it. Okay, So pay real close attention right now. Um, so as I said, the way, we, the way we used to do it, you, the smart developer, would go to Google.com, create a custom search engine definition, and we would store that. Okay, that's the way, This is the way we were doing it. And then later, when a user came along, came to your web server, sent a query, you sent that query onto Google, onto our customizing backend, and we'd send search results back to the user. So here's the change we're making. We're going to remove that whole top part of the system where you come in and, and create your custom search in. And instead, when the user issues a query, we're going to pass a URL. You're going to pass a URL from your web server to our backend. Our backend's then going to go back to that URL. You know, hit your web server. Your web server can go off and do whatever it wants, right? It needs to get data from somewhere else, wherever it needs to get it. And what's going to come out of there, once again, is a custom search engine definition. That comes back to us, and we send search results back to the user. OK, so um, that seems like a neat idea. What does this really allow us to do, OK? Really, this allows you to produce a custom search engine on demand. And what this really means is you can write tools to convert, you know, say, one kind of data to another. Right? So you want to create lots of different custom search engines, write a tool that, conver that converts the data you have to a custom search engine. 
And notably, you don't need to like track the changes in your data and figure out when they've changed and constantly keep pushing it to us. We'll grab it when we need it and, we do, and, and do all the caching so that your web server doesn't have to be so busy moving data around. So let me give you an example of this thing. Oops. So um, this is a, a site called cmelist.com. Okay, this is continuing med medical education resources, and they have a huge list of links on this thing. Okay, so this is you know this is a very nice page. It's got a lot of data on it, but it's not searchable right now. So what I can actually do, and I've put together a little tiny search box, which um, and this search box is what it's going to do is it's going to when I hit search, go out, get the the contents of CMEList.com, look at all the links that are on the page and then build a custom search engine based on those links, okay? So now we're gonna have a custom search engine which searches the contents of all the links on CME.com. So when we, when we hit search, this goes off and does that, and now we get results from diabetes that are only the things that CME list wanted, wanted to talk about. So how did I actually do that? So the code here is actually really simple, okay? This was actually the code that was sitting on that page that I showed you. And the important thing is, you know, this is basic, a, a basic search form that goes to google.com slash CSC. And the important thing is this CREF parameter, okay? And this gives a location of an XML file um, that defines a custom search engine. And in particular, this URL says, C, you know, send this cmelist.com URL into a little script that we wrote that does what I said. Fetches that URL, pulls the links out, and then builds a custom, and, and builds a custom search engine definition. And that definition looks something like this, okay? This is a chunk of, a chunk of XML. Now, if you're saying, oh my goodness, what are all those XML tags? Like, I don't know what that means. It's okay, because I'm now gonna give you the two minute primer on the um, custom search engine XML specification, okay? So, um, first thing to understand about how custom search engine works, what's the basic model for how you manipulate search results, okay? Here's the thing, you, when you think about it this way, you, you, issue the, you start with the results from google.com for that query, and then you get to change them a bit. How do you change them? You assign labels um, to a set of pages through, through URL patterns. And I'll tell you a little bit more about URL patterns in a second. So you might have, say, I wanna, you know, I'm gonna annotate everything on cmelist.com with good stuff. Okay, that would be the type of thing you would do there. And then you perform manipulations with, the, with those patterns or sorry, with those labels. So you can say, I only want to show things that have some particular label. Or you can say, I want to promote things in the results that have a label. Or maybe I want to demote them, right? Maybe I want to demote old news, for example. So what are URL patterns? Um, so here's are some examples of, of the types of things we support with URL patterns. The simplest one is on top. You give us something that looks like a URL, that's a URL pattern that matches exactly one page. Okay, piece of cake. When we start getting more interesting is when we add this little star to the end of it. And what that says is I want to, this URL pattern matches all URLs that start with that stuff. So foo.com slash path file matches, foo.com slash path name, and these other things. Okay? In addition, you can also add what we call a keyword after the star. And that just does a substring match of everything after, you know, after that path. So foo.com slash path, and then anything, 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 CSE, anything, anything, anything. And lastly, you can put a star up front if you want. So if you want to match, you know, if you have lots of, uh, you know, star.wikipedia.org, all Wikipedia sites, not just, you know, one particular language. Okay, so this pattern language is pretty powerful. So what do these annotations actually look like? So now that, now that we know about URL patterns, we know about labels, this XML is really simple, right? We, we have, I have a list of annotations. I have one annotation, which is about google.com slash star, which we know is all the pages on google.com, and I wanna label them Google, okay? That's all the first one says. The second one says everything at google.com slash coop slash CSE, so all the pages that begin with that URL, I wanna assign them two labels, the label CSE and the label good stuff. Notice the um, you know, subtle implication there. Um, so, the other important concept is what we call background labels. So, and all this means is these are labels that are implicitly implied on every query. So when I said, will you, will you use labels to twiddle the results up and down? This is really how you do it, okay? So what this is, all this is saying here is, I want to filter to only the labels that have the label, to only the URLs that have the label good stuff, okay? So I only want good stuff in my search engine. And then I also want to demote, or I want to boost negatively, all the things that have the label demote, 
Okay, and this is, these are the kinds of operations you can do in order to affect the order in which search results you're showing. So there's a whole lot of other stuff. That's really the important stuff. And uh, you know, there's things about, about offering search refinements, look and feel, and a whole, bunch of, a whole bunch of other stuff. You can go here and get all the details. But if you know those two slides, you know the really important stuff. OK. So what are we going to do now? So this seems, this seems like a neat idea. So we know a little bit about the XML specification. We know about this idea that, I can, you know, that we're dynamically going to fetch the specification of a search engine. What makes this a good idea? What kind of fun and exciting things can you do? So this is where I'm really going to start to throw some ideas at you guys and hope, and hope you, can, you can come up with even better ideas than some of the ones I'm going to suggest today. So here's one kind of thing that we, we've already talked about. A lot of websites have a lot of information buried in the links that are on there, right? Everybody knows links are great, right? And this is a great source for creating custom search engines. We already talked about CME list, but Wikipedia also tends to, for example, has a lot of links. And a lot of websites have a lot of good links. So if you want to, and I already showed you a demo of how we would, you know, a little tool that we wrote in order to uh, produce a custom search engine from HTML. But, you know, uh, but so, how, so let's go over again how that really works. So the user comes to your web server, you send the URL to us, back, you know, our customizing backend hits your web server, and then you go off and do stuff. And in this case, it's going off, getting an external web page, and then turning that into a custom search engine definition, right? That's really, that's really the important step. And then, then everything else works exactly like you would expect. OK? So this is the same flow we saw before. The only thing I've subbed out is what you're getting your data from. But as like I said, we have some version of this, but you can probably do better, right? We're fetching from one particular page. Maybe you want to do something else. Get links from multiple pages. Maybe, you, you know, maybe an entire site, if you can fetch all the, all the pages on a site. Maybe you want to go recursive. I don't know. What would make a good search engine? This is really my question to you. This is an opportunity to write these tools that will really make interesting search engines. Yeah? Um, if I'm doing a cross question, how do I get, see, how, how can I decide if it's a CME? I'll repeat it. I'm sorry, say again. Okay. I'm doing a conference. How do I get CME credit? In other words, how do we get that conference accredited? I don't understand the question. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> CME is continuing medical education. Yes. Uh huh. So, so the question was about CME and, and continuing education. So I was just sort of using that as an example for how to create a custom search engine. The details of how that particular one works, I don't actually know. So I'm just using you know, as an example. But that's the type of resource you would be able to find from that search engine, I hope. You could get that, you could get that to come up on your website. Right, that's what I'm saying. From the search engine, so the question is, you know, where would I get that, all that information about continuing med medical education? The hope is you could then build the search engine out of the out of the resources on cmelist.com, and then you'd use that search engine to find answers to questions like, uh, what are the accreditation criteria? I don't know, but that search engine should be able to tell you. Is this the microphone in the back of the room? If you have a question, yeah. If you have a question, please go up to the mic, okay? And then I'll, I'll grab you, okay? So let me uh, let me th toss out another example here. Um, why actually? But if we're you know if you are talking about your own website. Why go all the way through HTML and like pull the links out of it, right? If you have some you know, other content management system or some other data sitting in, a, sitting in a database, you can go through the same flow. Just go to your database instead, right? There's no reason to go through HTML. Just issue, it, issue some, whatever your database query is, produce the custom search engine definition, and it works exactly the same way. I hope you're not getting tired of this picture because it's going to keep coming up. But, um, but this, this actually leads us to something interesting, right? Now we really can create lots of different custom search engines. So here are two, in, two examples. Global Voices is a, is a network of bloggers uh, interested in development uh, all across the world. Right? They want to create lots of different custom search engines for all the different people in their network and focused on different topics and so on. Right? By doing this, they already have the data. Right? They just need to you know, be able to return it as a custom search engine definition. And now they have a custom search engine for all, for all of their users, for all of their topic areas. Similarly, the uh, DMOZ, or the Open Directory Project, has, has a lot of interesting data about a lot of different topics, right? That's the point, right? With this, they can create a custom search engine for every single topic out there, right? Every hierarchy, every sub-hierarchy can, can have a custom search engine. They aren't doing it yet, but it sure seems like a good idea. In fact, you can even write a tool that does it for them, right? So 
let me now let's talk about something a little bit a little bit different, right? So this is another place you know something that's not HTML. There's lots of iCal feeds out there, right? And a lot of times these iCal feeds will contain links to the interesting things. So you might have an events in San Francisco iCal feed. And inside the feed, in the descriptions, it's got links to all the, to the websites about these different things, right? About all these events going on. Wouldn't it be neat if every time you had an iCal feed, you had a custom, you had a search engine that searched the, what, what that iCal feed was talking about? That's something you can do with this. And guess what? It's the same picture, right? Your web server goes off, fetches those iCal feeds, and turns them into a custom search engine definition. So with one little script, you can make thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands custom search engine because there's so many interesting iCal feeds out there on the web already, right? There's lots of opportunity to do neat things here. So let me give you another example. So, the, and so Google Reader is something where users have come to, come to Google Reader and given, some, and given interesting things that they are interested in, right? And it turns out, actually, up before now, somebody had actually written a, a little bit of code where from your reader would then rip the data from reader and then go through the APIs that we hadn't published before, right, but they used, right, and actually push the data to make a Google custom search engine out of it. With this, this is now a lot easier, right? And once again, it's the same picture, right? You write a little tool, right, where, you, where your little tool is given the URL of a feed from reader about the stuff in, in, some, in, some, in somebody's reader, and then, and then all of a sudden, you have a custom search engine created, right? And you only have to create it when it's actually used, and we do all the caching and stuff so that your web server doesn't get too, uh, too busy or anything. So that's actually the last time I'm going to show that picture. So if you're tired of it, it's, you're done now. So, but there's a lot of other interesting things out there. So let me, let me throw a couple other crazy ideas at you, right? Your refer logs on a web server have a lot of very interesting URLs in them. I'm sure anybody here has sort of scanned through their refers, sometimes like, what? I didn't know there was a link there. How'd they get from my website from there, right? And sometimes it's a little disturbing, actually, right? Now, but wouldn't it be more useful if you had a search engine about this, right? You could you know, instantly find, are there sort of bad parts of the web that, uh, that people are getting to my website from, right? It would be a much more interesting way to try to explore that data, right? A search engine is a great way to do that. There's a lot of interesting data there. So here's another just a uh, totally wacky idea, right? I mentioned you can change the look and feel parameters of a custom search engine. What if your search results turned red when your website was unhappy, right? That's kind of be kind of unusual. Would it be useful? I don't know, right? It seems interesting, right? You, there's lots of things you, could, things you could do here, right? It's not just about ch changing the There's a lot of stuff in this custom search engine definition. Or let, you know, talk, let's, let's uh, sort of go meta here, right? You can look at, the, at other search results and build, a, and build a, a search engine based on those search results, right? Combine lots of things. How do you combine them? I'm not quite sure, right? But th this is the kind of thing that we think you guys can do interesting stuff with. So the sort of, you know, let me give the, the sort of brief summary here, right, is that our goal as the custom search engine team is to give you powerful tools to create and maintain interesting, dynamic, and high quality search experiences. We want you to have the power to create a great search engine for whatever topic you're interested in, for whatever kind of you know, subset of the web or whatever kind of ranking you want, we want you to have the power to make, to do, to make the best thing you, that you can. And that's what we're trying to do. And that's it, we're gonna finish early. Questions? Yeah, please go up to the mic if you have questions. Uh, actually, I just wanted to say thank you. About three months ago, I wrote a script that created uh, 2,000 XML files, and I uploaded every <laughs> single one of them by hand. <laughs> that's a, that, that sounds that, that, that sounds not like not a very happy uh, happy afternoon. So I'm glad uh, it was about this. three days actually. <laughs> Hi, I have a question about the uh, community aspects of uh, CSE. Um, is that going to get improved somewhat? Because it seems like uh, that seems to be the most neglected portion of CSE right now. So the, yeah, so the um, there are we, so the question is about the com community aspects. Basically, the way the model works now is I make a CSE. I can then invite people to collaborate with me so that they can add content into the CSE, or people can volunteer and I can accept them and then they can they can add content to it. And um, there's lots of things that, uh, that, we, that we hear from users and that we, we ourselves have, have wanted to do to make this experience better, right? Um, you know, it's hard when you have, you know, if you have 10 or 15 people and a lot, a lot of people are adding stuff, you're not sure what's going on, 
not sure which changes. There's a lot that we want to do in this area, and this, and this is something that we are very concerned about. The one thing I want to, I want to point out is with this, um, by allowing you to host the custom search engine definitions, you can do whatever collaboration you want, right? Whatever system you want to produce that, that final custom search engine definition, you can do. So let me give you an example. Uh, yeah. So, uh, hi. Um, I know this sounds like a cop out, we can, we're gonna keep using this saying that with, since you can produce XML specification and leave it on your site, you can use whatever mechanisms you want. But in reality, it does turn out that it's too hard and it's not really Google's role to tell you and dictate how your collaboration model should work. Part of the problem we had in designing the collaboration is that there are many, many, many different collaboration models. And it's hard to come up with a single tool which covers all these different collaboration models and yet remains simple. There are lots of social networking sites there, for example. Wouldn't it be nice to have a model of search where you're searching the entire web but the links that have been annotated or dug or delicious or stumbled upon or whatever you want to call it by you and your social network are ranked higher. One might even call it social search. Um, there are all these kinds of things. So rather than trying and insisting that everybody come to us and give us all their network, social network data and collaboration data and so on and so forth, we'd like to give the search platform to all the communities out there which can easily build these search engines and make them easily available. And there's a few sites out there. There's a site called Legit, which is actually doing this uh, already out there. And there's a couple more, a couple of other sites which are using this tool to use your current social networks and build search engines for you. Um, but if there are things that you think need to be supported by the core engine to help collaboration, We'd really like to hear from you because that's one area which I agree is probably the most neglected area of custom search engines. You said legit? L-I-J-I-T. -I okay. Yeah. Hi, definitely a lot of cool applications. Are there <coughs> any plans for uh, any service level agreement or anything with uh, custom search engine? Uh, yeah, I believe there's Certain classes, Google has, as you probably know, various levels of partners. And um, some of the, if you have enough traffic and things like that, we do provide SLAs. We're also in beta. We love to keep things in beta. So, of course, we'll transition yeah. someday. Yeah. <laughs> do you support all the file formats that uh, Google Yeah, this, this has all the core search features that core Google has, all the operators, all the file formats, everything. <laughs> In your uh, presentation, are you able to take advantage of like showing images, uh, some of the Google Universal Search features in the, in the? No, the Universal Search features are not available here. Um, but there are things that are underway. Because and fundamentally, Universal Search is a very hard problem. And a certain solution has been applied on Google.com. If you happen to have a site about, uh, I don't know, for kids, it might not be the most, our solution might not be the most appropriate. So we are trying to figure out a way of giving you the same power, um, going back to programmable search, allowing you to program these different, blending of these different corpora as you want to be able to do it. That's not, that we're still, it's still being worked on. Could you set your custom search engine to return only certain file types? Yeah. So you could just get video, image, well, so we, uh, custom search engine only searches across the web corpus, mm -hmm. okay? And so um, there are, there are the only, there are, you know, so you can't say, you know, there aren't typically videos in the web corpus, for example, so we don't, we won't return videos, there aren't images links. and so on. But Sorry. there, you know, as far as file type, you know, if mm -hmm. you want only, you know, you want only KML files, right, that are in the web corpus, you can actually, you can do that kind of restriction. That's a, that's a Google search operator. You could limit it to PDFs, for example? Yeah. Sure. Yep. Thanks. File type colon PDF. Hey guys, um, agree with prior comments. It seems really interesting just to play devil's advocate a little bit. You know, when I think about powerful vertical search applications, typically it's related to, you know, indexing a different kind of data or something that isn't in the existing web corpus. It, it feels like, in a sense, basically what you guys are doing with CSE is just predefining searches, essentially, um, narrowing the search criteria, essentially, in, in a way that kind of a 
you know, a dumb or less sophisticated searcher might find helpful. For someone who is actually you know, reasonably good at defining things and has gotten you know, good at using Google in general, for that kind of end user, what does CSE add? It, yeah, it turns out that it's actually um, not the same as just predefining um, what Alta was used to call a search macro. It's, this is, so let me uh, to give you a couple examples. Um, there's an uh, organization in Geneva called the HON, Health on Net. It's an affiliate of the World Health Organization. Um, and they've defined a certain a search engine which searches only over established medical authorities. Try and what kind of query would you do to make sure that you get stuff only from medical authorities? Or only alternative medicine. You know, no alternative medicine site calls itself alternative medicine. And no medical authority calls themselves medical authority. But we shouldn't, uh, and, not, not to not And to so reject. there's a base, uh, okay, so there's, there's two parts of it. One is there are sometimes there are certain queries which are just impossible to communicate for the, even for the expert, and most certainly for the layperson. There's, um, this is another great example, Sci only uh, stuff from scientifically credible sources. The point is that in the, in the beginning, before 97, 98, you had two extremes. One is you had hand-edited directories from Yahoo, and you had algorithmic uh, things from uh, AltaVista and others. And Google took a step in combining the two, page rank and anchor text combine the two. This basically takes, goes another step further and says, look, it's not just combining the two according to our algorithm. You can put in more and more of your personal knowledge to make something better and better and better. Right. Yeah, so essentially you're, in a sense, you're putting the, <clears throat> sort of the, the definitional power or the, um, the assignment power in terms of who's designated who's an expert, taking it out of the hand of webmasters, the links, the page rank approach, basically, and putting it in the hands of an individual. Allowing an individual to augment it and change yeah. it and build on top of it. You don't, you don't take away anything. And to give you an idea of the size of some of these things, many of these are better custom search engines involve many, many, many megabytes of metadata, which you certainly can't type into a search, normal search box. That's fair, thanks. I know that a bunch of you came to us and said you built some of these things. So if you have actually features that really annoy you or features that you really want, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Great. Well, you please go up to the mic if you want to ask questions because they're they're webcasting. So otherwise, the the lonely folks on the webcast won't know uh, won't know what you said and they'll be very sad. Oh, there's uh, t-shirts for you in the back. And Vic, you had a question earlier. I have two questions. Mm -hmm. Run to the mic. Yeah. Two questions. Um, one question was, uh, are you making this kind of capability available to the social sites? I know there's some folks from MySpace here and from Facebook. Yes. Um, okay. So uh, that's the answer to that. Secondly, is there pro do I have programmatic access to my search history? In other words, can I recursively go back through my entire search history uh, that I've used on Google and then dynamically define a custom search engine that is unique to what I've searched on for the past year? Yeah, well, yes, you can. And uh, here, I mean, actually, we hadn't actually thought of that at all. Uh, and this actually tells you the power of the, this thing. Because you can get your search history in RSS, and we have a mechanism for converting, just like we can convert all the links. And you give us a page with a bunch of links, we can convert that into a search engine for you. And so you, you, all you have to do is point it at your RSS feed of your search history, and you can search over your history. What's That's really a lot more powerful, th there's, a bunch of, <laughs> there's a bunch of privacy issues here which I won't get into because search history is all tied up and it has a lot of privacy issues. What's a lot more interesting is that it's possible for, say, uh, some other site, I don't want to pick any particular site, let's say um, fubar.com, right? If they want to offer their users search over all the pages that that particular user has visited on that site, they can do that with this tool, which is what makes it really powerful. Thanks. So thank you, everybody. There's sure